into heaven itself. He's saying, when Jesus Christ has entered, it's not a holy place here on earth, made with hands. You see, the tabernacle of the children of Israel at the outer court, and then the holy place, and the holy of holies. And once a year, the high priest Aaron, he will enter to the holy of holies. He'll bring the request of the children of Israel. He'll bring to the almighty God over there. But that's only your police will see here on earth. And then this is saying, Christ is beyond that. Christ is above that. He has not entered into an earthly holy place, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for who? For us. He has gone to appear in the presence of God for us. I'm telling you something tonight. This is it. Some people think that the ministry of Jesus for us ended on the cross. When he said, it is finished. He died on the cross. And we always point ourselves to the cross. That's good. And we always cover ourselves in the blood of the lamb when i see the blood i will pass over you and we think the ministry of christ for you for me for the church ended on the cross but now this is sin he rose from the dead he went to heaven and then it says in heaven now now to appear in the presence of god for us if you knew that, you will know that Jesus Christ is still having a ministry towards you right now. He's praying for you. He's interceding for you. And he's praying that all the power you need for this present hour, you'll have them in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 7, we're reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth. This is talking about his risen life, his glorified life, his presence in the presence of God by the side of the Lord. He ever liveth to make intercession for the people that have come to him. Why is he making intercession? He says he's able also to save them to the uttermost. Able also to save them to the uttermost. You see, there are people after they are saved because of persecution around them, all the trials around them, all the temptations they face. They're wondering every time, will I survive? Will I go through this? Will I overcome? Can I be a victor? And look at everything surrounding me. And he's saying, it's not only your strength. If you're looking at your strength, am I strong enough? Am I able? Maybe you're not able, who knows? But he is able. And he says he's able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him because he ever lives he ever liveth to make intercession for them for such an high priest befits us became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens the Moses could have prayed for you for the great privilege but you have something greater if Joshua could have prayed for you, what a great privilege. You have something greater. And if um, Daniel could have prayed for you, what a great privilege. But you have something greater. If Paul the Apostle could have prayed for you, what a great opportunity. You have something greater. And if your pastor could pray for you, what a great privilege. But you have something greater. Because he is higher, made higher than the heavens. And he is the one that is making intercession for you. First Peter chapter 3, verse 22. The great intercessor who is on the throne is seated on the throne 
and is praying for you. First Peter chapter 3 verse 22. Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. That's the position of Christ who is praying for you. That is the place of Christ who is praying for you. That's the authority of Christ who is praying for you. And that is the sovereignty of the Christ who is praying for you. Angels are under his authority. Authorities are under his power, his dominion. Powers are under him. They are all subject to him. And he says, even though he's in heaven, at the right hand of God, there's one ministry he continues there. He never sleeps, he never slumbers, he never gets tired, he's never frightened, he's never afraid. He knows that whatever he tells the Father, the Father is going to give him a yes, an answer. And he is praying for you with that confidence. And when you pray, you understand it's not only your prayer, Christ on the throne, Christ seated on the right hand of majesty. He is praying for you to Revelation chapter 20, chapter 3, verse 21. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and I'm set down with my father in his throne. I am set down with my father in his throne and it's from that throne room that he is praying for you. Let's look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11 verse 22. But I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God God will give it thee Martha said Lord Jesus Savior friend your friend Lazarus is dead for days she has been buried but I know even now even now in this condition in this situation I know even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God God will give it thee even now at that time he was not on the cross yet at that time he had not risen from the dead yet now I but even now even now even now seated on the right hand of majesty and I know every prayer Jesus has ever prayed for you God will answer every request the Lord has made for you the Lord will answer you see can you remind me of some prayers the Lord has prayed for me he prayed for you that you will come into the kingdom that's how you came he prayed for you that he'll give you the spirit of repentance that's why you repented he prayed for you that he'll give you the faith the faith to believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior that's how you believe he prayed for you he said simon simon you can put your name there satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you the lord has prayed for you that your faith will not fail that you will not fall that you will not backslide and god has answered that prayer up till this moment he has answered the prayer Tomorrow, you'll keep on answering the prayer. And then next week, you'll keep on answering the prayer. And you will see the Lord face to face. The prayer of Jesus for you. That your faith will not fail. You'll keep on answering that in Jesus' name. Not only that, he has prayed for you. That you'll be sanctified. Sanctified and through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them whom thou hast given unto me. And it is so sure as day and night are sure it is so sure that Christ's prayer for your sanctification will be answered in Jesus name he has prayed for our unity that we all will be united that as he and the father are one I and my father are one 
we should not shed kind of lose courage and say, well, will, will the church ever be united? Of course, it's simply not same prayer because he died for the church, not for a divided church, a downtrodden church, a weak church, an anemic church, a kind of invested church, a church that is infested by the power of the enemy and the power of the devil. He prayed for a church strong and holy and united and the prayer of Jesus for his church and this church will be answered in Jesus name I know that even now whatsoever you ask of God he will give it you let's look at verse 41 verse 41 verse 41 then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid isn't that what the Lord is waiting for? He said, take here away the stone. He wants to pray. He wants to get Lazarus out of that grave. He wants to get you out of that condition. Out of that situation. But he says, take here away the stone. What's the stone? Something you just put over there. You sealed it up. He said, the end has come. There is no hope. The man is gone. The woman is gone. The situation is final. And then you put a stone there. You say, forget about it. We will endure the loss. And then he says, take here away the stone. He's waiting for that. So that his prayer will not be hindered by the stone you put you put there at the final scene as if there's no change anymore. Take here away the stone. And then we're told in verse 41. Then they took the stone away from the place where the dead wall was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. He has not even prayed. I thank thee because you have heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Think about that. Now he's by the throne. I mean, now as we're talking. So I've been on a retreat today. And then he knows your heart. He knows why you came to this retreat. Maybe you're coming for the first time. Maybe you've been coming before. There's a desire in your heart. You want healing for your body? Deliverance for your oppression? Child bearing for your barrenness? Jobs, employment for your unemployment? He knows your heart. And the Lord is praying for you. Every one of those desires, the Lord will fulfill. Because it says, Father, I know thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. We're coming to number two now. It's great intercession for our triumph. For our victory, for our overcoming life, Christ's great intercession. What do you need from John? Sorry, from Isaiah. Let's start from Isaiah. We'll come to John later. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12. The intercession that Christ is making for you, making for me, making for our friends, making for our loved ones. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12, Therefore will I divide him a portion of the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He made intercession for the transgressors. You know what? The Lord never writes off any sinner, any transgressor. To say, that's final. They've gone too far. They've done too many bad things. There's no hope for them. Never. He makes intercession for the transgressors. Isn't that the reason why Saul of Tarsus was saved? Paul, that's why he was saved. Even though he was a great sinner, the chief of sinners, 
the mercy of God came to him because Christ made intercession for transgressors. What have you done that you think you've gone so far? What evil have you committed? You think you've gone so far? And that means then, no hope for me? No mercy for me? Of course there's hope. Of course there's mercy. Because he makes intercession for the transgressors. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. 23, 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. Oh, I thought they knew. I thought they knew they were crucifying Christ. Yes, they knew. I thought they knew that they were rejecting him because of their envy. Yes, they knew. I thought they were deliberately accepting Barabbas instead of Christ. Yes, they knew that. But they didn't know the ramifications and the extent of the evil that they were doing to themselves. They know not the consequence of what they were doing. Father, forgive them. What a great intercession. A great prayer. And many times as you do what you do, if you have not been born again, you don't know what you are doing. You think you know. You think you know your purpose and your goal. And you think, this is why I'm being what I'm being. But you don't know the extent or the consequence of what you are doing. You know many things that people do. They don't know the extent. You know, a brother just preached now, spoke about temptation. And he spoke about the temptation that came to Abraham. And then he said, now, but he came to the Lord and God forgave him. Of course, God forgave him. Did he know that the fruit that will come out of Hagar will continue plaguing us and destroying us? Because now, out of that fruit that came from Hagar, see what has happened. 